In this video, we'll look at the equation for Fe3PO42 plus H2O. This is iron 2 phosphate, and here we have water. So we're going to take solid iron 3 phosphate, let's put a little S out here, and we're going to put that in liquid water. We want to know what happens. We should look at whether this iron 2 phosphate will dissolve in water before we do anything. So as we look down, we're looking for iron 2 or for phosphates. And here we go, phosphates, PO4, 3 minus. When we have salts that are bonded to the phosphate ion, they're going to be insoluble, with a few exceptions. What that means is when we put our Fe3, PO4, 2, our iron 2 phosphate in water, it won't dissolve. It'll stay a solid. So we put it in water and it just falls to the bottom of the beaker or the test tube. It remains a solid. So there's not much of an equation we can write. We should note, when we say insoluble, we mean that almost all of it doesn't dissolve. But really, a very, very small amount will dissolve. So we could write the equation for that very small amount of Fe3PO42 that dissolves. So the phosphate ion, that has a 3 minus ionic charge, each one of these. That means we have to have a 2 plus ionic charge for everything to balance out. So we'll have three of these iron 2 ions and then we'll have two of our phosphate ion here. And since these are dissolved in the water here, let's put AQ after it. AQ stands for aqueous or dissolved in water. So this would be the equation for the very small amount of the iron 3 phosphate that dissolves in water. Sometimes you'll see the water placed on top of the arrow here. And sometimes you'll see water even written here in the products. But since we have aqueous, we're saying this is dissolved in water. So this is Dr. B with the equation for Fe3PO42 plus H2O. Since it's insoluble, it won't dissolve in water. There will be, though, a very tiny amount that dissolves, and we could write the equation for that tiny amount. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.